He's whiny. <laughs> yeah, like he sounds like such a bitch. That's so funny. Okay, so we haven't we been. Just talking, I guess we that's fine. I, dude, I feel bad today. I don't know what's going on. I got like a headache. Uh, so I, I was saying this earlier in a call and my mom was laughing at me and saying, I don't think that's true. But uh, so I went back to visit my parents' house here because I had to pick up my passport before going on the Tokyo, uh, the Tokyo voyage here. And I came back and my, my bed you're is going different. to Tokyo? You're going to, you're going to Tokyo, the East Tokyo Worldwide thing? Yeah, because I'm going to be in Korea for a while anyway, uh, for something that I absolutely have to go to, no missing allowed. Uh, and oh, so I'm realizing, like, you know, there's no reason for me to not simply... Uh, yeah, if you're already in Asia... You gotta right, go. like, if I'm already spending the thousands of dollars on the plane trip, I might as well just stay there. Because, like, also the yen is so weak right now, I can basically yes. just... Like, my plan was to basically just stay with my friend, eat sushi, and lift weights for just, like, a few weeks. I mean, that's why everyone's going to eat whatever it is, eat World Water, whatever it's called, because the yen is so cheap. It's just getting there. That's expensive. Yeah. You know, and like, it's going to be a huge, I mean, like an 18 hour plane flight is, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be unfun, we will say. Right. Yeah. I would have loved to have gone. Uh, and now I'm going to be like the only person at fucking NFT New York City, but so such is life. Is everybody going? Is that like the choice? Like it's going to be NFT New York versus Tokyo? Yeah, because Tokyo is like a week afterwards, but like people are not going to do both typically. Um, I imagine all the New York. When is when stuff. is Tokyo? Do you know? Uh, it's, I think it's mid April. Because I think I was going to try and go from like the like fifth or something to like the twentieth ish. Yeah, you're gonna get, definitely be there. I mean, I think it's like the fifteenth or something. It's the fourteenth. It starts the fourteenth. And it goes to the, it says 14th to 16th, but it's probably the whole week of like after that, including. So yeah, it overlaps with NFT New York City, right? Because NFT New York City is, starts on the 7th, on the 10th, and it goes from 10th to the 17th. So everyone I asked is like, I'm going to Tokyo instead. I'm like, listen, I'm not, I don't got Tokyo money, okay? I'm not going to fucking, I'm not taking a fucking 18 hour, $3,000 flight, right? If uh, if it was also like any time, if it was like literally even a month late, nah, maybe not a month, but. I probably could have justified it in the summer, but I feel like in April, I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to fucking Asia in April. I don't know. I also didn't hear about it until like a week ago. So that also adds to it. I don't know what fucking calendar everyone else has where they just know all the events ahead of time, but I don't have that calendar. Only reason I even know that this one was happening is because, because girlfriend has a, a sh NFT showcase with her stuff. So I was like, okay, yeah, we're going to that. Yeah, I, I have no idea how I'm supposed to be figuring out when all these global crypto events are. Yeah, everyone fucking just knows. They're like, oh, yeah, you're going to go to Colombia? I'm like, what are you talking about, Colombia? They're like, oh, yeah, because uh, this is like the East Dev Conference or whatever. I was like, I had no idea. But, I mean, Colombia, I would have gone to that one because it's cheap. Colombia is so dirt cheap that, like, and the flight's cheaper to go to Colombia half the time than it is to go to New York. From really? Here. I mean, because it the, it's the same distance from Texas. And Colombia... Sometimes they're just like, there's just low tourism. And they're just like, yeah, fucking come out here. I could have got the the flight to Colombia. Like during the, the conference, I could have got the flight to Colombia. And if I had thought ahead of time, I could have did it all for like $800, like including stay yeah. and stuff. But no, my, my big issue is just that I own cats now. So I can only leave for like one week and then I have to have like a neighbor come like feed and water them and stuff. Oh yeah, true, true. I might. I'm. I'm honestly thinking about getting rid of them just because, like, now that I'm fully remote, I don't have to worry about like anything. Getting rid of your cats. Yeah. Oh, you know, no. like I. So I can. I can just like uproot myself and go travel. Uh, but like I have cats, which are like the one thing preventing me from just doing like infinite. Like I could literally just camp out somewhere. That I feel like in practice, that feel it's less fun than it sounds. 
I don't know, because for me, whenever I did, did the, I didn't even do it that. Dude, I've been, but... I have been stapled to my house in like wagey mode for so many oh, years fine, now that like, true, true. I, I just need to go, uh, I need to go frolic a little bit. I feel. That's a good point. You know, when I did a, a little bit, I mean, granted, I have not been stapled to my house. I just was always getting fucking mixed up because of the uh, time zones. It was fucking me up anytime there was a meeting, because I was just like miscalculated, or or it'd be like daylight savings time, and it was just really obnoxious to me. I feel like it works best if you like pick a spot and stay there for like a month. But that's or like it would always be like I mean, granted, I was dealing with people in Europe, so that also doesn't make it easier. But like it would be like I'm like, oh, there's this meeting and I'm like on a plane. I'm like, uh, I don't know. I just didn't like the moving around. But that's just me. I, I feel like I know other people love it. Like Dunebug is does that. She's always fucking moving somewhere. Girls do like their traveling. Yeah. And she's a dev, so she could just do dev shit, I guess, while she... Or front-end dev. <laughs> front-end yeah. dev? Front-end I, dev, yeah. I always like... Uh, I don't know. Whenever I, I... I have a bunch of friends who do, like, infrastructure and back-end stuff, and whenever... Uh, whenever they see some girl, uh, like, posting about being a dev or whatever... They always respond or like quote the message to me or something and send it to me and say like, I will bet you one thousand dollars she's a front end dev. I will bet you one thousand dollars she does web dev. And yeah, I don't really do know uh, what it means by now, but they're always right. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it. I feel like it's the same task. I mean, like there's obviously like way more autism involved in doing like a data, like doing back end shit and doing like full stack stuff, but. I, I don't see it. Hey, listen, if it was me, I'd do fucking front end dev too. It seems like the best of both worlds. You get to be the dev. You get paid roughly the same, if not more, because everything's front end now. And you don't have to fucking work as hard. I think that's just good. I thought the front end right guys made less. They probably do ultimately make less, but they, it's not, I don't think it's that much of a difference. I think they make like... I mean, like I think most jobs, they're, the, their, their devs are only front end. Most jobs don't have like super detailed back ends. And uh, and like the companies, if they're smaller, well, there's, like there's a- actually a lot of companies I found that have their own. Uh, they have their own front ends that they need built, but they just like buy someone's back end. Exactly, that's like most companies. And I know that the companies that have the back end, unless they're like a Facebook, Google type of shit, they don't really have. They're not like paying them substantially more. They're they're getting paid like you know maybe 20 percent, thirty percent more. Like when for like the crypto company I was working at, my friend was the back end of. And he was making only slightly more than the front end people. Hmm. So it's like the for for amount of I yeah listen I'll take the less slightly less payment for more work for less work and more freedom and the same clout. <laughs> it's like fuck it yeah sure. I don't I don't really know how much of this uh, how much of this dev shit is going to wind up being still here now given a GPT four. Oh, absolutely the fuck not. I was watching I was watching videos and just getting blackpilled. Like motherfuckers are just like, Oh, make a this app with this that uh and it fucking did it in like twelve seconds. It's like most of your programming I mean, jobs are. That's gone. that's kinda where I'm at, man. It's like I had I had an app that I wanted to build out to do uh like data analysis and like AI image uh recognition stuff. And I like suck shit at coding and it like did it all for me in like forty five minutes. And this wasn't even like chat GPT plus, right? Like this was the base level <laughs> chat GPT, <laughs> like the dumbest, the dumbest, cheapest, poorest person version of it all. And I uh, wound up having something where I can like, I can put graphs in and it will tell me mm-hmm. it will rip the numbers off and it will classify them along a normal curve across the various different axes and stuff like that. And like it can, so I, I can upload like hundreds and hundreds of pictures and just have it iterate through all of them in like 30 seconds and then when i was applying i've been applying to data analyst stuff and i'm like this no this job isn't even gonna exist you could just now that they have plugins for chat gpt it's like just put the fucking csv in there and ask it questions like <laughs> you know what i mean like there's not there's yeah no, i mean unless you get like unless you get like really aesthetic with it like cause, you know some people are like really gifted with the making aesthetic like graphs that like you know, that's like, that's what kind of what they people want now. But like outside, normal standard data analyst shit, it's like, you don't need that anymore. So, hey, such is life. It's over. Everything's fucking over. And that's how I feel about it. It's fucking, it's hard for me to be motivated because I'm blackpilled now. It's AI is ruining everything. Ted K was right. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start, I'm going to be a professional juggler, I guess. 
<laughs> that's I should have. I told my mom from the beginning. Juggling is a career. It's the only career for me. And ultimately, I was right when I was eighteen. <laughs> Professional juggling will be my job. I mean, it seems like a lot of these people don't really have an understanding of. Uh, I mean, like my company, not my my old company. Uh, they seem to have like really no idea of how this stuff is going to play in the industry and how it can be used as a tool to like improve processes and stuff. And I think a lot of these like sort of like uh, mainstay industry companies, you know, basically every company over like thirty years old, uh, they they seem to really just like not not get that you can like quadruple the productivity of like a smart worker by like tossing the shit at him. I think if you have a company that's built in like at like a hard tech company with built in atoms, like this is like the best thing you've ever heard in your life because those are the only companies that will matter anymore and you can absolutely just blow up. Uh, yeah, I just think that's But these like, are the ones that don't like know how to use yeah, it. I mean like it, yeah. I and this is the other thing is like if I was still working there, what I would have done is I would have gone in and I would have said like, uh, oh yeah, like I am exactly as fast as I used to be, haha, except I would be using chat GPT to iterate everything uh, and, and be like 75% more efficient and then just like slack off, right? Like I, I never, it never would have occurred to me to like tell everyone like, oh yeah, guys, we can be so much faster if we like do it this way, right? Like I would have simply just been like, this is my secret thing that I use to have 40 free hours a week. Oh, absolutely. I would absolutely use it to completely remove my workload and just get a second job. <laughs> I would absolutely just start stacking jobs until they figured it out. That's the Tim Ferriss thing. I mean, he used to do that before AI was helpful. The four-hour work week, he just automated all this shit. But that's when you know he could automate it with Python and no one else could really program. But like, yeah, now... You GPT, get a second job, boom, you make it twice as much for the less, for just as much work, or if not less. And there are a lot of jobs, though, that are just, like, not uh, automatable. That's the, uh, th th there were definitely some periods in my old job where I would have stuff that it was, like, it was a deeply big pain in the ass for me because I would have to do a bunch of, uh, or, like, meetings are another one of those things, right? This is, like, a very mm. basic example of this is... There's no amount of skill you can gain where like a one hour meeting turns into a 10 minute meeting, right? True. Like I can't yeah. get so good at my, and, and like, that's another thing that's a big pain in the ass because as you move your way up through the corporate ladder, your day goes from being like 10% meetings at max to being like 75% meetings. Yeah. And now you're just like, I can't fucking, like, I can't get out of this. Yes, you know, have a, and I like I can't yeah. even like dick off during this really. Like I can sort of be on my phone like a little bit, but like you, mm -hmm. it just gets to this ridiculous thing where you're sitting in a meeting and like uh, I'm like fucking like taking taking my pen and paper and I'm writing down like uh, <laughs> like I'm writing down like tweet drafts on my <laughs> on, on my notepad because I can't have my phone out for a length of time that would be appropriate to like draft a tweet. And That's like, funny. Oh. No, I mean, yeah, for meetings, I mean, I was always baffled when, you know, those, uh, the overworked sub subreddits or whatever, when people would, like, figure out how they, like, had five IT jobs, and they would, like, create setups so they can be on multiple meetings simultaneously, because that's the real, like, bottleneck. It's like, how do I do multiple meetings for different companies? And they would just have, like, multiple cameras facing them, and, like, they, they just had, like, a whole fucking multiple monitor thing, and I, that's just too much effort for me. It's, it's sort just, of funny, though. It is pretty funny, yeah. It's, it's also, also like, it's also just funny because of like the you know there's like a certain type of person who's really uh, into like scamming their workplace and like, I mean like I know I did just talk about like oh I if I <laughs> if I was still at my old company I would go and take Chat GPT and use it to like be lazy and shit and it's like the reason that I'm not doing that though is because I like left the company because like I fundamentally think that. Uh, like as a man, if you're gonna go through life and your whole thing is gonna be like yeah, bro, like, I'm gonna scam the system, I'm gonna extract as much as possible from his little input, it's like, like, there, there is some, like, uh, like, a sort of weaselly sexiness to it, I guess, but I think it's deeply unfulfilling, and, like, you get to, like, age 35, and you, you start hating yourself, you know? Well, the thing is, you're, ostensibly, you would use this to do your own project on, during work hours. Right, right, and that's what everyone, but, like, that never happens in the same way that, like, I mean, I had, Again, like when I was at my old company and it was like an actual job and shit, and 
I, I had to come in every day and it, it's like, theoretically, I can start up all my own things on the side, right? Like theoretically you can, and that's what everyone says is, oh, it's, it's safer to start doing this on, uh, on the side. And, uh, when you, when you still have, uh, you know, like all of the benefits and the employment and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, look at how many uh, times it actually yeah. happens versus if you take the people who say, nope, I don't want to do my job, so I'm going to quit and then I'll have to figure it out. Oh, yeah. Being all in is much better. I mean, I feel like, though, when I say, like, do your own stuff on your own time, I think more of, like, your Amazon flipping business or something. Or like your Yeah, I mean, I, I did. It wouldn't again, be, like, all of, your All of those passion. things were, like, they were stupid. Uh, you know, they, they, they were all, like, opportunistic side hustles where I was basically saying, oh, there's a market hole. And, like, it makes sense from, like, a capitalistic perspective to blah, blah, blah. And, like, yeah. I, I think the universe uh, thinks that stuff is kind of, like pussy and it like doesn't want to reward you that much right like the universe likes it when you do like labors of love and you do things that uh you know they actually wind up being fun right like milady was like a a fun good example of this right where like it didn't make there was there was no situation in which milady as like a financial investment like was like you know it's like a picture of like a cartoon Mm -hmm. girl or something right like it's not but but it was like, okay, well, this is fun. Like if, if you can make this fun and you have fun doing this and then it, wow, like, you know, th- the money flows from the fun, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, the, you have to be all in. That's, that is something that I have also found in life. You can't do things half-assed because if you do it half-assed, then it just won't materialize. It's very rare for people. It's very rare. With, I don't know if it's like either internally, you know, you're half assing it. So you don't like put your full offer in or if just the universe is like you have to be all you have to like have no safety net otherwise you unlock like a given what what i noticed at least is like i unlocked like a, a total order of magnitude of extra creativity when i was like you've got to do something now yeah i think also you have to have when you when you don't have subroutines running in your head for your job all that processing power can go towards the thing you're trying to do right so it's not like so if you're, if you're, you know, you're not wasting a lot of your mental energy on shit that's not, that you don't care about, right? So you can put that full energy towards the task. And it just, that, that, um, that small margin, it seems small to you, but it, it's like exponential in its output, you know? So it ends up being just, you have far more productivity when you're f- fully focused on one task. Um, but at least that's what I try to tell myself. But, um. Yeah, I know. I think it's a mixture of just being all in and also just having, yeah, you're right. Like the labor of love part of it. That's what I'm trying to do. But that's what I'm trying to get the, uh, the labor of love going to, for this next run. I'm trying to get that, that, uh, that bag. We well, it also it. seems that the labor of love winds up getting formed out of working with people who you like, like, and are aligned with and get along with. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of situations where people, and none of this is like a super profound, uh, like this is all like boomer wisdom, right? Like this is stuff that probably everyone's know. parents told to people, but like, it's also a little bit different because the way that all of this got passed down to me was like, it was in a way that didn't necessarily explain it in the way that I needed to understand it. Right. Like when people said like, don't, don't do, uh, don't do the thing that makes you the most money, do the thing that you love. Like I never understood or got that. And it wasn't, it wasn't until I realized that there's a secret hidden part of that, right? And the secret hidden part is don't do stuff that makes you the most money. Do the stuff that you love and then the money will come because you love it, right? Like yeah, that's, no one told me. Right, I hated that's, that. That's shit. the hated. fucking, that's the fucking last part that sells it that nobody ever said, right? Well, and I think, I think the reason nobody ever passion. said it is because okay. for a lot of people, that isn't true. Uh, yes. for, a, for a lot of people, you can do things that you love and not make money. And also a lot of people will misinterpret what doing something you love means, right? Like there's a lot of people who you can go and uh, you, you can say like, oh, do you love your job? And they'll be like, yeah. And it's like, they don't. Like they observably don't love their job. In the same way you can ask the average person, like, do you love your significant other? Yeah. And like, there's a lot of them who observably do not, right? And you just mm-hmm. don't know... Uh, you know, like love, love is a thing that you can't really understand until you've actually experienced it. And there's a lot of people, I want to say probably like 80% of people actually who get to a pretty advanced age where they still haven't like, you know, they they haven't had it. 
they've had well this they, is the thing so you can say like i i love them and love to you is defined as whatever the greatest feeling of affection as you've ever had right but like maybe maybe that's meaningless right maybe maybe the greatest affection you've ever had is uh you know it, it's like a high tier of like Yes. No, that's the thing, though. This is because I had this problem growing up because my dad's an artist, right? And he's always like, find your passion, son. Find your passion. He's like, I find my passion. Look at me. I have like blah, 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 right? Because he made money doing the thing because he always just picked the thing he liked to do the most, right? And so that's his job, right? And now he has like a company, blah, 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 right? However, since I grew up around, you know, fucking wishy-washy artist people, they're when they're saying like, find your passion, I'm like, they are pushing like, you know, like a ephemeral type of thing that I just don't under that i just didn't understand like i looked for it right i was like oh, i want to be an animator i want to do this and i'm like this is not the thing that's gonna repel me so it took actually even longer than the average person i feel like for me despite being told my whole life like just do what you want and it's because they don't they, the, the secondary part like you were saying where it's like you being completely motivated like the, the part that i really needed to hear was when you like something or love it or whatever you will work harder and you'll work on it when you're not working. Like you'll have it running in your yeah, head and you, all the time. You would like unlock a level of competency that doesn't exist for other things. So like, yes. yeah. And so that's the thing can, that I need. You can provide more value to these things. That's the, that's, also the, like, that's the big thing is like, I mm -hmm. could become, I could try my ass off to force myself to become like the world's best uh, infrastructure developer. Right. And I would be able to achieve some level of competency within that domain. Uh, but I would be suicidal in a way that would prevent me from ever competing with like the, the, the Chinese seven year old wonder kid who's like born for this. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I was always thinking. Like, cause I was like, Oh, I should be a dev. Right. Because it's like, I have the skills. Oh, well, I, I, then... looked, I looked at the supply and demand of the market curves, and I realized <laughs> that there's there's the supply curve of devs is shifted too far to the left, and so I should come in and fill that because you know, and yeah. like everybody, everybody who does that shit gets fucked, bro. Like they remember, so remember when we were kids, everyone was saying, "Oh, go be an engineer, bro. Oh, go mm -hmm. oh, go be an engineer," and now they're saying, "Oh, bro, go into software," and like it's literally mid curving it. It is it yeah. is the pinnacle of mid curving your employment, right? You have to go out and you have to figure out like what do you actually like to do you can't you can't look at it through this stupid like opportunistic futures based market uh, yeah, examination yeah. it doesn't work especially because like you have to consider you will never outcompete that autist kid who's been who's loved it his entire life like my best friend he's been a programmer he has failed out of school because he was programming instead of doing schoolwork right he was like in undergrad and he would he would skip his classes to program and he was in a computer science degree and he like literally dropped out of it because he would program so much that he wouldn't do the work for the programming degree. And it's like, you're never going to beat that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not going to beat the person who like has been programming for fun since he was a kid. Yeah. Because that's, it's not. No, I, I, you, you see this all the time when people get into like, uh, like media debacles and like cancel showdowns and stuff is like the side of the cancel who fucking loves the game of it never loses. Mm hmm. What do you mean? Uh, just look, any, anytime you have some sort of like a big PR dispute between two bodies of people, yeah. uh, you know, if you have one that's like, they don't, they don't thrive on like the conflict, they don't like the, the propaganda, it feels bad to them Oh yeah. versus one, you know, like, a, look at the Milady cancel, man. Uh, mm -hmm. Are any, are any of the cancelers still around? Are they still? No. Are they still poking the bear? Like, no, it's not. The, it's yeah, just the Milady like, Bears, they like the conflict. They want to keep going. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat someone who's like, who's getting thrill out of the, who's getting a thrill out of the fucking conflict. It's not, it's not possible. Yeah, and that's the same thing with, with all the work stuff too, is you can't go and, uh, you can't go and expect to half-ass and beat somebody, even, even somebody who's like three times dumber than you, uh, expect to beat them if they're grinding it and they legitimately love it exactly um yeah no there's no chance there's, and that's the thing about it it's like i it in a lot of i feel like this issue is more happens with people who are a little more rational again like you know my again my family's artistic right so like they made decisions their entire life off off of emotion and it works out for them because that's the kind of person they're passionate people right so it's like i'm not going to do anything else i'm going to be x artist right and that's just how it's going to be for them Whereas like I could never do that, right? I was never able to go, I like this, 
and I'm willing to throw out all of my rational understanding of this and the other thing to do it until I got to the point where I realized I'm not driven by that at all. I'm driven more by spite <laughs> and curiosity. <laughs> so once I, <laughs> once I learned that, I was like, Oh, and that's how I got my math degree. Some, some fucking twat at my, when I was in college, I was a philosophy major, which I just love. I read philosophy for fun. I still do. Right. And I was a philosophy major and something, something. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm good at math. And he, and he goes, I don't remember who it is. This is how my brain it works though. He goes, I remember explicitly what he said, but I don't know who said it. They said, you're, no, you're not good at math. Cause if you were good at math, you would be doing math. And I, my head was like, you motherfucker, <laughs> you piece of shit. I'll show you. I don't remember who it was, but I did show him and I got, that, that, that same week. I got a, a math double major and then ultimately I got the math degree because I was like, you fucking bitch. I can't remember your face, but I know I won anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I sort of learned everything through like uh, the process of going and doing the the opportunistic optimized thing and then sitting there for years and years and realizing like, wow, this sucks ass. <laughs> this yeah. is awful. <laughs> and I was like, uh, and you know, what basically happened was I just got to the point with everything where I was like, uh, I, I have to leave, right? Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting, I'm getting to the point where either I leave or I just start becoming such like a disgruntled worker that I like, uh, I show up at work for like 90 minutes a day, do nothing mm -hmm. and then just like get fired. Like, yeah, I am. I, I was at the point where I realized like, I like, I don't know how this works, but when, when my brain realizes like, okay, not only do I not like this, but I have no future doing this forever. And if I continue doing it, I'm going to like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to like rope or something like that. Then I realized like, okay, well, we, we you know, it, it's like an instant blockade that you hit where you're like, I'm done here. Right. Yeah. No, for me, it's like, I, what is it? so for me, it's more like I was trying to fight. So because of how naturally like low conscientiousness I am, I was doing a whole thing for a while where I was, I realized that I cannot be motivated off of hard work. I can only be motivated by like internal challenges, if that makes sense. So I would like do things that I thought were hard because if it's hard and my, my stubbornness will make me do it anyway. So I was in this mode from like 20 to like 25 or six until I eventually realized that once I, I, I started reading books about like economy and markets and shit. And I was like, oh, you don't get more money by doing more work. It, I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out. You don't get more money by doing more work. You get money by, you know, either stacking things or doing or having things that are high leverage so you can get paid even when you're not working and shit like that. Like everyone kind of figures out eventually. And so that's when I had to start, stop fighting my natural urge to slack off and instead try to change my urge to slack off to how can I get the most leverage off of the things I do, which is like how I do anything really. But I was, you know, I was doing things like, you know, I would like the reason I read Infinite Jest, other than the fact that I wanted to read it was like, it's a book that people don't finish. Right. So my head was like, you have to finish it now because and you have to create the diligence and the stick with itness to finish the book. Right. And now it ended up being a good book, so I don't I don't feel mad about it. But it, I had to change that kind of my brain to like go back to my high school slacker thought process where it's like. I'm going to optimize my studying to 12 minutes <laughs> right before the exam and get a hundred anyway. So I had to go back to that and figure out how to, how do I make money that way? Which is how I got into crypto because here we are, you know, the most leverage for the amount of, you know, things you do. But I don't know. It's like a, it's a strange, you know, I feel like a lot of the boomer wisdom is just so wrong. It just, it's obviously so impractical and just doesn't the, the apply boomer anymore stuff i think is all like all of the boomer wisdom i think is correct but it's just conveyed improperly right like i think this is the big problem is like i think they they did at some point get the wisdom but there's like a massive translation layer discrepancy between boomers and the rest of us where like the things that they say to pass it on to us are not like uh shared values that we understand like the, the prime example is the do what you love thing right where it's like <laughs> They, uh, they, they don't explain why the love is important. Well, they say, I mean, that, that expression is like, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. But it's like the, for example, like for them, their goal is to like enjoy their job. Right. And that's not our goal. I don't think enjoying my job is my goal. It still feels like a job. Even if I'm doing something I really like, if when I'm working, I'm like, I'm working. So 
it's not I'm not gonna like it because I'm being forced to do this. Whereas like in in a sense it's true with crypto where it's like I will do more work in crypto because even on my off time I'm still researching crypto just by talking to people on Twitter. Right. So it's like I am doing what I love and I am not working half the time I'm working. Like so it's true, but that's not how I just needed to be told something completely different. It's just not it's just not applicable. Like I, I think when I explain to other people, like how to find what they should do, like when I, cause there's always that moment after college where you're like, I don't know what to do. I know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't do that. And I was like, and so what I did was, I mean, I'm fortunate I was enough to have this ability to do this where I spent a couple of years just not doing anything. And I was like living, my parents were like paying for shit. And then I eventually, I was dating this girl who's her family, her family's rich. And so she had a little bit of the rich girl knowledge that she can impart upon me. And she did the whole, this is what you do when you're killing, when you're spending time alone. Like when you're not doing anything, what is it that you end up doing? And I ended up, you know, looking at markets and crypto and shit like that. And she's like, okay, that's your job. Then the thing you do when you're not being told to do anything, that's what you should be doing. I would write a blog. I would make a podcast. I would research math, like crypto shit. And it's like, that's your job now. Go make that a career. And I was like, oh, see, why didn't they say that earlier? You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like some fucking hobby I had. I mean, it was a hobby, but it's like. Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of this also boils down to the fact that like a lot of this advice is just not applicable to like mid curvers. Because if you were to say, you know, like sort of what I said before, I guess, but like go do what you love or whatever. But, you know, like the average person is going to say like, oh, I love like video games or like Netflix or like masturbating or something like that. And it's like, okay, well. You have to be like higher. You have to be like a higher quality of person for this advice to like. <laughs> That's true, yeah. But even though I feel like the mid, like even well, I don't know if this counts as mid curve, but it's there's like half the time when I see like the mid curve and they have like a little fucking Etsy store, I'm like, just do that shit. What are you doing? But they don't, they don't think that way. I guess like you know, there's a lot of people. I don't know. I mean, like I feel like a lot of these people won't leverage the things they do do that are. Like, for example, even being an astrology hoe in 2023, there's, you will make so much fucking money if you just do that correctly. When I see Marin make have millions of followers on on TikTok and hundreds of thousands and and she's just selling philosophy. I mean, not philosophy. Like, um, she's selling crypto now, but it's her astrology shit is how she made money. I, I'm, I'm like, like uh, I'm, I'm like unironically worried about Marin because she's done this thing where she's like tied uh, like spirituality in with markets, which I think like. My, my personal philosophy on that is that like the market is like a black box. Like the market is the market is something where like, if you try and involve God with it, he's going to like spit on you and laugh at you. And he's going to fucking like throw lightning bolts down at you and like destroy your life for like, yeah. for like your arrogance and assuming that you can come to him and ask for help in this domain. Like I think I mean, the market, the not, market is like the most worldly thing in the world, right? You're supposed yeah. to use the tools that God gave you, like the physical tools down here. And if you come up to him begging for like the extra stuff, then you just get fucking smited. I think that's true for everyone else, but I think it's not as true for the um for the tribe. I think they have, I think their I think their situation, I think their God lets them do whatever. <laughs> I don't think they make, they get the best of uh, both worlds here. <laughs> She got the she got the tribe uh, stat bonus on on money making. This RPG, this the simulation RPG. I fucked up in the character creation. I should have I should I should have picked the the money making uh, <laughs> stat build. Maybe, but no, she's also. I mean, she's a weird person. I'm so blocked by her. I don't know why. She's I've, I've always been nice to her, but it doesn't really matter. But she um she's the kind of person where she, I don't know how to explain it. She's the kind of person who's like so nihilistic that it ends up coming out the other side that she ends up being successful you know what i'm saying like those people who are like so like everything sucks and it's like nothing matters and i want to kill myself yeah and that's so so that the things that she does do ends up working out because it like in a karmic way it doesn't satisfy her you know what i'm saying yeah she's she's got that like i'm being punished by my success magic that i kind of wish i had I, i'll <laughs> the 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 miserable billionaire type of fucking grind like she like uh when i was talking to her in miami i was just like you are like you are like the most like you're like the darkest person <laughs> i've ever talked to who has this success normally these people burn out and die very young but which could also still happen to her but it's still interesting 
Yeah, I don't really know anything about her at all, other than I, I've seen her do like uh, some sort of astrology stuff. Yeah, she's a. I mean, I've met her a few times. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know her that well, but she does seem to. I don't know. She's nice enough. She gets a. Uh, yeah, she's nice enough. Even though she's blocking me, I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that. She's blocking you now. Well, she's blocking me for I think a reason that has nothing to do with my behavior. It has more to do with her being friends with a girl I dated. Not because of... Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I don't think it's because of anything I did. So, I don't think it's uh, I don't think I have any uh, choice in the matter here of being blocked. But I feel like by now, it's like, yeah, all right, we can, we can move on now, no? I've been punished enough. Hmm. But, uh, what was I... What were we talking about before I did the Marin tangent? Think about these thoughts now. Oh, we have crypto markets back. We're still back. It's the bottom. Is we're back in DeFi summer. Were you around for DeFi summer? I was around, but I wasn't around crypto Twitter. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, the I remember the DeFi summer. I have the same vibe I had then, where I had already like I had given up on crypto. It's always like right after I give up. Like I gave up on crypto in DeFi summer, like two months before it started. And so people were like bullish posting, you know how everyone bullish posts the entire way down. And I was like, shut up, you fucking idiot. You don't know anything. And then I started to see like, but then I, my curiosity starts to build. Cause I'm like, people I respect are bullish posting what's going on. And then, you know, that was like a little bit late to the party, but not like, you know, ETH was still like a hundred dollars. So it wasn't like that late. It was like $150 maybe. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm still in. So that's how I feel now. I had just like, I'd sold all my crypto shit mostly because I was broke. And now I'm like, okay, we back. We actually back now. I see the, I see things creeping up. And once they start creeping up consistently, they don't really stop. Well, I'm trying to figure out what, like, am I supposed to be like totally uh, exposed? Like, am I supposed to be like max longing everything right now? Because, um, like, I don't know if max long, but I definitely feel like this is when you start building the position that later becomes the max long. Because like, like, I, like, yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at these charts and stuff and it looks like, uh, you know, like we're in a weird fucking spot right now with a lot of this stuff. Yes. So like, what I'm not, I'm not Mr. Technical Analysis Genius Boy here. Like, I'm definitely not pretending to be like a trader extraordinaire, but I have been talking to some pretty smart traders and they have been telling me some things and like from what i can tell we're in uh you know this this whole like 28.6 ish area for bitcoin that's like so we could what happens go up usually, or we could go down no no we'll probably chop around sideways but typically what happens is and i don't know what it's going to be but what happens is it hits like a bottom and everything moves sideways and then some new like uh breakthrough happens and all of a sudden everything starts going up from there so like last time or like even if it's not a new breakthrough like something drops on a platform that existed that wasn't popular and then all of a sudden everything blows up like so uniswap showed up and when everything was chopping around sideways and then DeFi summer started so it's like something around now ish in the next month or two it's something's going to show up that everyone gets excited about and starts using and then that like starts to transfer the the scam cycle begins so I don't know what it's going to be because nothing new has really shown up yet. Um, but there's going to be something that makes everyone excited. And then once everyone gets excited, that's when the money starts coming back. But it doesn't seem like crypto is going to drop much more. Like, I feel like this is 2019, but the 2020 crash that started the, like in 2019, everything came back. Everything started coming off the bottom and then like Bitcoin went to like $12,000 or something in the summer and then it dropped back off to, you know, 8,000 chopped around. And then all of a sudden COVID happens and crypto dropped 50% overnight. And then the, then the bull market started. Right. So we're probably in the 2019 era where everything kind of pumps in like an echo. Things start to chop around again. The things drop off in a bit, they chop around and then something new comes out that it makes everyone excited. But this is when you start building the position, right? Cause you don't see like, even in that scenario, the bear market of Bitcoin was at $3,000. It pumped to $12,000, but you don't see five through eight K again. Like, you know, like the three to three to five to six range, it doesn't come back. So I feel like we're in the, 
like the 22 to 26 range, 28 range doesn't come back again. We kind of stay around here. And then from here, it kind of, or maybe it goes back down to 21 one time. And then that's the end of it forever. Yeah, no, because I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at a lot of these metrics and like, there's no open interest. Like yes. nobody, nobody is leveraged. Everyone is doing this entirely on spot buys. And that's the thing. So spot buys is where it creates the bottom. So the leverage is the shit that makes the volatility that, you know, that's how you can drop 40% in a day. But like, you don't get that with spot buys. People don't like, people who get the spot buys are usually the institutions and like the long-term players. And they don't really sell those until they get worth a lot. So the spot becomes like the floor for the future, whatever, for the future like market push. So the floor is being made now, which is why everyone's like, this is the bottom. Because once everyone starts getting leverage happy, that's when you get, you know, the crazy bullshit that wipes everyone out. So building spot positions, I feel like is the good the thing to do, which is what I'm trying to do. Also, I'm trying to play the market this year or this coming year, with mostly spot. Because for in my experience, I might get a lucky a few times to get some cool paydays and some fun days with leverage, but the only money I made that stayed around were spots and NFTs. So that's I still insane. have to sell those stupid fucking monkey NFTs, man. Well, now I wouldn't. Now I would just keep it. Shit, Arbitrum's back. Well, not back, but like people are using it. Is it really going to go up from here? The the monkeys? I yeah. Mean, I don't know for sure, but it doesn't seem like they're going down anymore. So since you've already made it through the the hard part, I would just keep them. Shit. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, 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 you rode them to the bottom effectively. So now it's up only. I guess that is true. I do love selling the bottoms of cycles. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to holding it to the bottom is the hard part, you know? round tripping into the top that's where that's where the the boys are separated from the men hmm. i don't know i don't have anything to sell at the top i sold all my shit <laughs> this time now, now i have a tax burden that i have to deal with soon i have to fucking file my taxes and i don't really want to do that i am extremely not looking forward to that i'm gonna probably extend them it's not it's not necessarily because like i'm gonna be like, I think I'm going to be getting a decent amount of money back or whatever, but just like the idea of sitting down in front of a government portal and entering in all, you know, like it's just soul sucking. And I, I said that I wasn't going to get a CPA until this next year. And I'm like, oh, I really fucked up, but I can't do it now because all the CPAs are no or booked out. No, you just gotta, you just gotta do the extension and then get the CPA. I'm gonna do the extension. I've never done what, that before, what do you have but, to do to get what what do you do to file an extension I think it's just on the site there's like did a, they they a just form. let you say like yeah we'll do this later yeah pretty much that's so dumb it is dumb but the, yeah I think you I think it pushes into like July I think it's like it's a pretty it's a pretty long extension I think it's like three months but it's enough of an extension to like let you have the CPA how stupid yeah, I mean, they, they basically are like, you'll go to prison. So they are like, we can, they'll let you push it back indefinitely as long as you ultimately pay them. They're not like pressed about it. Shit, I, 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 mean, I know so many people who like have years of tax debt that they don't find out until they're like, for like a decade. And they're like, oh shit. And then the IRS comes to them later. They're, 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 not, they're not very uh, efficient. But I don't know. I've never tried it before, so I, I'm, I'm I'm speaking mostly from what I see other people do because I've I typically pay it early. It's just that this time things have worked out such that I've been pushing it off. Mostly because I don't like the number that Coinbase was showing me when I or not the Coinbase, whatever tax like website it is, the crypto tax thing that like looks your, looks at your wallet and tells you what you're. I'm like I don't like this number you're telling me. I don't have nearly <laughs> this, this amount of money you said I made is not real. Where the fuck did that money come from? Because I don't, I don't, I don't, I never saw it. Yeah, I'm fortunately uh, not feeling like that's going to be my issue. I think, I think the the way that I generate wealth is through uh, my day job, and then I use crypto 
to lose it all. <laughs> Powerful. That's yeah, the way I think. To do I it. mean, that's that's turning around a little bit, I guess. Like I've, I'm, I've been smarter overall with things, but in the past, that's definitely been the way it goes. And like every cycle, I've made it out with a higher percentage of uh, the top. But like this, mm-hmm. this last cycle, I said something like, "My goal is to make it out with fifty percent of my portfolio all time high," and everyone was like that's a really low bar Lucas like that's, <laughs> that's really and like I did not do it <laughs> like I was nowhere close this so, is the way that I I mean I typically make it out with a solid amount of it well not I, I mean I, I, do, I, 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 I ran away I ran away with a fine amount but it was like it was nowhere near what could have been done if we had called the top perfectly right you don't even need to call the top. well from my, from my experience the way I've done it is that if there's two consecutive month candles that are down I might like, get the end, and because you don't typically get two month candles down in a row, otherwise, because uh, crypto goes straight up. Um, so if I see two like legit, if I see like two month candles in a row that are down, and then they like close below, like the two the the one that was like the second to the highest one, I'm like it's GGS, and that's not failed me yet. So unless all of a sudden we start doing some different shit. I feel like you can well it looks much- it looks so I'm looking at this now I'm looking at uh, the Bitcoin USD graph here mm-hmm. and it looks like we have two months okay so the which, what was this the 2013 bull run so that one I wasn't in so I, I'm thinking 2017 and 2021 okay I'm looking I'm looking at 2017 here and we didn't get two consecutive monthly red candles until it was at like 5k really yeah you sure because i feel like it or maybe it was two really uh, how about weekly look at weekly maybe i'm thinking weekly not monthly no i i, I think you're thinking monthly for the 2017 because it went from it went from uh oh yeah in february it did go to like fucking 5k but then it rebounded and then I went to like fifteen hundred or some shit, fifteen thousand or some shit, and then it sold off from there. Twenty seventeen was just hilarious because it like uh, it went from like twenty k down to like eight k, back up to like seventeen k, back yes. down to like eight k. Yeah, just yeah. Kept, so like I, it kept whiplashing case, me around, and like every day I would refresh my port. Like, and I was I was in college at this time. I was spending all my days uh, either in classes or like stimulant trading these charts, and like. I would wake up one day and I would be like, I'm rich. And then I would like wake up the other day and it'd be like, I'm broke. And then it would just be like, it just kept oscillating back and forth every other day. And uh, I remember very specifically, I was in a discord group with this one, uh, this one anon. And it went from like, when it went from 20 K down to like 8 K up to like, uh, up to like 16 or 17 K again, he said, uh, sell everything now and don't think about crypto for three years. Thank me later. And, he was right, and I I flamed him so bad. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is the future of finance. Like, fuck you, dude. Like, it's here to stay. You're just a bitter hater. I'm gonna like. Mm-hmm. So that's actually when I that's when I got into crypto. But that's when uh, Bitmax started sh- being um, becoming popular. So I started shorting after that second rebound. So I was fine. I learned how to trade during the way down in 2018. Because that's when I started on crypto Twitter as well. Um. So everyone was shorting and I was shorting that down. So I did actually pretty decently in 2018 because that was when I learned how to trade both directions. Um, but uh, 2021, I stopped doing that because it. once I started realizing how fucking scammy the fucking exchanges were, I was like, I'm only playing the direction up. And now that we're going down, I'm just going to sell. Because I realized over 2020... I was like, if I hadn't just stopped shorting and like anytime, all those liquidations and stuff that happened eventually, I would have just been better if I sold the top and then just like bought back lower. And I've now realized that that's my method. Like I know when to short, but instead of shorting and getting fucked on some like, you know, green candle dildo, instead I should just like sell and not come back. And that's what I did this time, which is why I saved more of it. Because I just sold it into stables, and also back then Tether wasn't like trusted. Like people used it, but I do didn't you, trust it. Do you it. remember the like thirty-seven times I asked you? It was like every like additional week that we went down, I would be like, "Bro, verse, what are we supposed to do? Am I supposed to sell everything?" And you were like, "Yeah." 
And then I would come back the next week, like, bro, like, am I supposed to sell everything? And you would just keep saying yes. And then I would just keep asking. Yeah, and, you then, uh, it. and then at one point after like repeating this cycle, like six times, I was like, is it too late? And you were like, no, dude, just fucking sell. It's self like everything. It only goes down. No, like, that's, I have definitely learned my, I learned my lesson very well on that one. Just fucking sell it the second you see it's going down because it's just not going to come back. Everyone's going to be hype about it for, everyone's going to be wrong for a year once you hit the top they're gonna be like it's gonna come back don't worry i'm like no i've learned my lesson you fucking sell the stables <laughs> and you come back in you literally sell the stables you come back in like a year and buy and like you'll probably be fine well just like this the is, weird this, the weird thing about later. it to me is like how did all of us like uh like how how does this happen so so consistently right like how like we've had We've had like four of these cycles that have been like exactly the same thing. And everybody winds up, uh, everybody winds up falling for it every fucking time, bro. It's because like we're in a, we are in our own echo chamber, right? Because we're in it enough to know what's being made and this, that, and the other thing. So we see things that are like going to be probably useful, right? So like we'll see like blur show up or we'll see, you know, NFC or like NFCs were still pumping this time. So people were like, oh, well, it's okay because well after the the peak of it nfts were going for another six months or so right so we're like okay things are kind of okay it might not actually be this bad this time and then you know terra collapses this collapses and then you're like oh yeah it's not different actually as it turns out uh it doesn't matter it's fucking goes it's over the market's over everything just destroyed and then we come back later fortunately i learned again i'm not i i have a very natural uh aversion to group think i guess which is helpful to me in a way because like i'll sell a fucking nft project i like at the top i don't give a shit if, <laughs> if it gets near my target i'm like this is the end i'm watching the order books people stop buying it's time to sell I'll, i've i'm pretty good at selling the the sentiment or at least like the the order books steam when like the buys stop happening and i'm very good at and also i'm just good at being contrarian too so i once I feel the my contrarian urges coming, I'm like, it's over. It's time to fucking go. That's that's my big thing here is this is like the big appeal to me of uh working working with open exchange is the fact that it's like you know, and this is basically like my crypto thesis uh for this next cycle. And it's a lot harder now because all of the coins that were fitting this example are now like actually dead with Do Kwan being arrested. But my my idea basically was like there's a bunch of these billionaires who came in and they all have proven like a few things, right? One is uh they have the ability to like build things out quickly and support an ecosystem and uh the second is that they have a lot of they have a lot of ability to mobilize funds to the market, right? And my thoughts were basically like, okay, so all these guys blew up, right? And everyone is like, oh, I hate them. They're scammers. They're evil, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I th I think that basically means that everything new they make is going to be trading at a turbo massive discount. Yes, absolutely. So you have all these people who are like hyper, like Do Kwan specifically is a great example of this. Like he, he's clearly a hyper competent individual. Uh, you can say what you will. Like, I think his, his ego may be uh, like his, his, a bit of a weakness there for him. Uh, and he has, you know, like his PR people clearly told him just like, stop doing public appearances, right? Like they, mm -hmm. they, they clearly said like, this isn't helping us. This should just go away, be less active on Twitter. Uh, go just focus on building stuff. Uh, but like everyone on his team thinks he's like a genius. Everyone works with him because they, they're like, this guy is just such like a powerhouse genius. There's no point in, uh, in going against this. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I was like, okay, well like, yeah, the first Luna exploded, uh, but like, if he's still going to work on continuing building out this second thing, like I'm kind of thinking I'm going to invest in this because yes, well, yes. But I mean, like that is, I think a good thesis is just that he was, is being tracked by Interpol. So him getting arrested, I, I'm not, I wasn't shocked by because he was, because like Korea I was a little surprised him. that he went to an airport, uh, knowing all of the, you know, like that's, that was a little weird, but that was uh, weird. That, that, like that was that was an extreme miscalculation one might say but i like so that was weird uh and then there's the thing with like i don't know i mean uh the ftx and sam and stuff like solana was another one of those coins where like people were fudding solana because of the association with sam 
Yes. And I, so I bought a bunch of Solana as it was going down because it was like, or I, I bought a bunch of Solana basically after he got arrested because I was like, well, like, this is a good coin. Like, yeah, I mean, a, you should be doing well now. I mean, it was, uh, I had went, Solana. I, I bought it at like $9 now. or something. And it's at like 20 or something now. So yeah, yeah. like I, I yeah. wanted, I wish I, I kept my Solana because I did have it at like eight, but then I ended up selling it for use to use it for shit. But like, I mean, I still want to buy it now, honestly, because like I, yeah, like I, and I, I think basically that like the, the billionaire, uh, you know, like the, the billionaire blow up FUD, uh, that all of these coins have. And again, same thing with like uh open exchange, right? Like everybody, everybody fucking hates, uh, the three AC guys because they're like, Oh, their fund blew up and collapsed the market or whatever. Uh, so we're not going to buy this. They're, they're scammers. But like, it's one of those like very poorly thought out criticisms. Like what's the, they're scammers. Okay. Like what's, you know, like what's the actual, what's the actual allegation being brought to bear here? Because it wasn't like, it wasn't like they, they didn't really scam out. anyone. They That's also the thing. Like they anyone. literally, there's just... no, there's no like outgoing, uh, like legal disputes. There's no outgoing like police searches. Like all of this stuff is not like, you know. Yeah, they just ran from the clients whose money they lost. They didn't like. Scam it wasn't. Anything. They they literally just... were just unresponsive for like a while. It, they, they also were, got fucked by. There wasn't also, even they... like lying. Yeah, and that's the other thing. They they, they got, got fucked by by the two their two biggest investors being Celsius and uh, Terra. Well, or, and, okay, or so, major ones, at least. I mean, the other thing is like, so they, they didn't have like retail investors. Right. And th- so there's a, there's a few really big things with the three AC blow up that I think need to be clarified is one, it was like a 12 plus something billion dollar fund. Right. Uh, but only like 2.5 or something like that billion were other people's money. So like it was yeah, they mostly they, fucked themselves. Right. Then. Like they mostly yeah. lost their own money. Uh, and yeah, I mean, like losing billions of other people's dollars isn't great, but like they didn't, these weren't like, uh, these weren't retail investors, right? These were like Voyager, Celsius, et cetera, people who like, they invested with them. Yes. Right. This wasn't, this wasn't like they told retail, oh no, this is like a super safe. This is like, these were like known experienced investors who came to them and said, and there were like 27 of them or some like ridiculously low number and said like, uh, Okay, we're we're going to go and we are going to invest with you because you your fund has had great returns, right? So like if if you're handing somebody over seven hundred million dollars to invest with, like the due diligence is kind of like you know it's it's on that's your you. fault. Yeah, you have to do it yourself. It's yeah, not like-, like you you I I'm not I am not capable of being like oh wow like the the Celsius was scammed out of their seven hundred million dollar investment fund because they invested it in a uh, a fund that wound up going under right i know but also celsius they the fund went under because celsius went under it wasn't them right celsius was doing the lending that's the other thing is like celsius like effed everything and then it like created like a feedback loop that effed themselves even further yeah exactly uh, so it's like of all the people that people are mad at or got mad at that one they're the most well they they didn't really do anything basically all of the three ac creditors like they have this situation now where like all of them all 27 or whatever can be like listen like we know that this isn't necessarily what happened but like the game theory of this situation is if we say that 3ac was bad or implied that they did some sort of bad thing uh there's more of us than there are of them (laughs) and and public you know like it's it's the game theoretically optimal solution for all of them to come out and say or or at least imply that there was some sort of bad shady thing some wrongdoing going on from 3ac uh, yeah. because, because three AC is one entity. And if, if everybody who three AC is dealing with is saying, Oh, like they fucked us. And the only person saying you didn't, we didn't fuck you is three AC themselves. And it like, it doesn't look good. Public perception is not going to be on the side of them. Right. Yeah. I think though, the people, we might, the average person was more mad is because Suzu's the, this is the super cycle. He was all of this super cycle, like, well, commentary. and this is something where like, I literally, but it like, is a super cycle. I don't, kind of. I don't understand the criticism of all this because that's literally what all of us thought. Right. Like, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and it, it also wasn't like, this was some, cause you know, everyone was saying, Oh, Suzu's like trying to pump his bags. Oh, he's trying to whatever. And it's like, no, like he literally, like he had more skin in the game than any of us. Yeah. He like, genuinely thinks this is, I mean, it's not like it's not the super cycle. It's just that he, 
miscalculated like leverage and shit because it's still like i mean like even if this is the like the bottom actually happened it's not like like well, twenty thousand. So, i mean they, 20, got, they, got fucked by Luna. they they did they did yeah, they did, yeah. And like that, that was of, uh, and like, I'm not going to say that Luna was like the entire reason that everything started to like spiral for them, but like Luna was definitely a, uh, you know, I, they, they lost some hundreds of millions when, when Luna blew up and that wound up, uh, like increasing their leverage on a lot of things. And, and then you have the thing of like, they got hunted by Alameda, right? Like, yeah, that's true too. Yeah, and like I, this is one of those things that like nobody knows for sure <laughs> that they got hunted by Alameda, right? But they had a very big pos- position open on FTX, and we know that Alameda had like yes, internal yeah. group chat screenshots of leaked of them like celebrating when they hunted big funds, basically. And like, what do we think the chances are that Alameda, when everything was blowing up, wasn't trying to hunt three AC to try and squeeze out like a little bit of extra capital? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Alameda is like very predatory. So, I mean, I think that's fairly safe to like everyone. I mean, this was why this was why everybody said they didn't use FTX was because they were like, it's the the fucking like scam wicks and shit were just like absurd because they they would be constantly like driving the price around everywhere just to like liquidate fucking everyone. Yeah, FTX, FTX very for a while did feel very fair until like at some point you start to realize like. I don't think I should have lost, like, when you start to get wicked, you start to get, like, fucking liquidated on shit that, like, I don't know, just didn't make sense. That's what I mean. I just stopped using it. Like, I, I kept it for, like, a few other things. Like, I kept it for, like, their bull tokens, which I kind of liked. It was easy when it's, like, a, uh, it's easy to trade those bull tokens for a bit. And also, I kept them for, like, you know, just because it's easy to use their shit for, like, quick conversions. But then, like, by the time, when they, when they put Caroline in charge, I was like, eh, gotta go. Oh, no, no, sorry, not when Caroline. When, um, the other Sam left after after um after Terra left after Terra like imploded and it, while all the other CEOs were like leaving their companies I was like oh Sam T leaving I'm like this is when the the company's going under and I'm glad I like kind of kept track of that I'm glad my uh my yeah my I, I had no idea I was completely I was completely fooled by Sam's charade that he did where he uh. He came out and said, like, oh, like, we're, we're doing so well after it. Because, you know, basically the situation was that, like, every crypto company was blowing up, going under, announcing bankruptcy, et cetera, et cetera. And then FTX came out and said, we're acquiring all of these other companies. And, like, the basic idea there was to signal to everyone, like, oh, we're in such, we, we are in such a good position, such a secure position. We're so well capitalized that we are going to uh, be buying up a lot of these funds that now need it, right? We're going to be saving the market. And, uh, you know, it, it basically came out that he was doing this specifically to trick me, right? Like me as a person, uh, <laughs> but the, the demographic of people who were like me, who assumed that, oh, like him buying this stuff is a signal of financial stability. It's a signal that he's fine. Right. Uh, and I was, uh, I was wrong. He was actually, I mean, for me, he was doing it as a huge scam, which was actually oh, yeah. like, this was, this was like one of those things where like people want to talk about like scams or like predatory behaviors or something. This is like, you know, this, it, he literally pretended to like acquire comp or like he, he rebalanced the books, borrowing funds that didn't exist from Alameda specifically so that he could pretend to like buy this shit up so that he could trick me. Right, like that's so fucking. That was, that's yeah. so because you know there, there's a very big. Uh, I, I think there's a very big reliance on like the attribution of uh, maliciousness in all of this stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm able to, I'm able to deal with like a lot of stuff that's like, you know, maybe, maybe this was bad and it exploded the world, but like if you didn't do it like intending to be evil, then you know, yeah. like I, I can't, I can only be so mad. Uh, I think with for me though, it's like. The thing I didn't trust Sam for a few years. I did trust him because like anything he touched would pump. So I was always on that train, and I was always like, you know, his last name is Bankman meme. Right. But no, I mean, I, the I, parts I, that I didn't trust were like my friend, for example, my friend, the programmer guy. He used to work for a company that worked with Radium, which is one of the Sam, you know, Solana companies. And he was like, this company is vaporware. He's like, there's like, there's none of the debt. There's like three people on it. And it's like, the devs are all imported from this thing and it, nothing inside of it's real. And that started to make me skeptical. I was like, okay, if radium is fake, I'm sure he's doing this on a lot of different companies. He's like, it's not fake, but it was like bullshit. Right. And so he's like, he's like a lot of the stuff on that. I've worked with the Solana as I've worked with radium. He's like, a lot of it's just like not real shit. It's like, it's like, I'm 
it's fucking faulty code and this, that, like, he's like, there's a lot of just bullshit in here. So that started to make me a little skeptical. And then my misogyny took over when he put Caroline in charge. Like, who the fuck is this chick? Like, <laughs> I'm not I fucking... thought it was really funny that they painted her as this, like, hyper competent, like, Machiavellian, like, counter trade girl. And yeah. then actually, she was just, like, looking at FTX's data and, like, <laughs> you know, like, she, yeah, she was just, really, she was, lost like, so most, much money. Most classic fucking example of, uh, like put the, your girlfriend in charge of a fucking yeah, multi-billion yeah. dollar fund. And I was like, no. I, anytime someone puts their girlfriend in charge of anything, I'm like, it's over. Gotta go. And I was like, I'm so glad that my prejudice on that one like was right. I was like, he put his girlfriend in charge. I got to. I'm taking all my money out of this right now. I had a pretty, good, I had a pretty good friend, actually, who was trying to sell me Celsius. Uh, yeah. Tell, tell me to get into Celsius, into that whole ecosystem. And uh Bro, I almost worked for Celsius. I like was the like, first he, company he was, I he was trying to get me. He was trying to get me a position doing some PR stuff for Celsius, actually. And I was like, uh... so I like I read, I... About, I read about the company. I spent like ninety minutes reading about the company, and I came back and I was like, did these people put a porn star in front of their treasury? Yeah, dude, I forgot they, about they that. Let, they let a porn star manage their treasury, yes. bro. And, so that was one uh, of the first companies I almost worked like, for. Like that doesn't matter. Like, and I was like, it uh, really does matter. It absolutely matters. Um, <laughs> And I was like, dude, like, I don't know how to like, you know, but it's like the the type of judgment that would allow somebody to put a porn star in front of their treasury. It's something that will, it will predestine a company for total failure. And he's like, that's absolutely not true. Like women can do any. And I was like, this is like, nah, bro. I was like, you need to live in reality, dude. And he, uh, the second we, I we saw a, that we, shit, we had a big dude, dispute over this, and then like literally one month later, Celsius goes like entirely bankrupt and like destroys yeah. the entire market. And I was like, "Bro, I've been waiting for that to happen like, okay, for well, years." Okay, well, it's not dude. because they hired a porn star. And I was like, "It, like, it absolutely is. It's a hundred percent because again, not, it, even it, if it's it not, is, it, like, and it's not necessarily because like the porn star in front of the treasury did it, right? But it's like the type of judgment." that allows somebody to think that's a good idea is also not the type of judgment that allows a company to uh, like not Succeed, explode. Yeah. Exactly. And le- not to mention they were a fucking lending company. No, bro. I, I, I again, my, my very first contact in crypto worked at Celsius and I almost worked there. Um, and ultimately, I mean, he's a really nice dude. I, I hope he's doing well, but that they found out the porn star thing happened around like everyone found out around like 2019 ish, I feel like. And from there, I was like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not involved. And I'm, and I was not shocked when it fucking went under. I was like, this is, this is clearly going to happen. It, I'm shocked at how many companies it touched though. I am shocked at how, like, how many companies were like borrowing from them using their services that shocked the shit out of me. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not shocked by the, by the outcome on ironically. And that's the thing. You got to be prejudiced with these things. Unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, prejudice works in certain scenarios, and it absolutely it works almost every time when it comes to your money. I'll tell you that. When he gets older, he won't sound like this anymore, right? <laughs>